Hi there. Glad you can join me. My name is Michael Fudge. This is an SQL screencast. Today we'll be talking about stored procedures and business logic encapsulation. That is writing little programs with SQL statements in it that you can encapsulate into their own commands and then execute as many times as you want at will. That's the idea behind stored procedures. They have a lot of uses and one of the main uses of them is again to take complicated database logic and uh, make it easier to execute. One of the examples that we did in an earlier screencast, uh, this particular program here where you pass in an employee ID and then an amount of the raise and it will it will give that employee that raise. This is a perfect example of business logic that you would want to encapsulate into a stored procedure. The, the advantage of, of rewriting this particular SQL script as a stored procedure is, is that no one has to open this script up to run it. The script has been um, pretty much prepackaged so that at runtime you can specify these values. So you get a lot more mileage out of it than you would out of a plain old SQL script. So first let's talk about how you can turn this into a stored procedure and uh, let's do it and then watch it run. Okay. So I'm going to put uh, create procedure up here and then the name of the procedure let's call this uh, p uh, give employee raise. And it takes two input values and employee ID as int comma the raise as money and then as we'll begin. Now we're not going to set values here. Where are these values going to be set? At the time that we execute the procedure. So again like functions, you know, any fool can write a stored procedure just like any fool can write a function, but you have to make sure that what you wrote really does work the way you'd expect and the only way you're going to be able to do that is to try it out is to test it out you're writing you're writing procedural code at this point which is very different than anything else you've done in SQL because so as begin let's run this update um, let's indent this stuff so it looks a little neater okay and then end so now what I have here it's kind of a long program but it says create procedure the procedure name is uh, prefix it with DBO just to be safe. Give employee raise. It takes the, as input the employee ID. It takes as input the um, amount that we want to give them the raise. And then this logic has all been proven before. We're going to update it. If the row count is one, then we know it really works. So we're going to just kind of you know print out a little message, and then otherwise we are going to um, print out a little message that says we couldn't perform the particular function. Okay, so we have this all in here. When we execute this, um, we get command completed successfully. What does that do? Again, because it's create, it's complete, it's making a piece of metadata. So if I go to Object Explorer, and if I go down to Programmability, and then Function or Stored Procedures, you'll see Give Employee Raise right there. And now that I have that piece of metadata, if I execute this again, it's going to say there's already an object which is why if we want to write it as a complete script again we would say drop procedure at and then go and then create procedure and we can then run this script as many times as we want etc 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 alright let's make the magic happen now so I'm going to do, do a new query and I want to run this procedure so I'm, let's let's give me a 50 cent raise so I'm going to say um, execute you can say execute or you can just say exec and then what's the name of the procedure and give it the two parameters so first is the employees ID and then the amount of the raise 50 cents and execute the raise occurred from employee Michael Fudge there you go and just to show you it doesn't work I don't think there's any employee 333 so I execute that and it says the raise did not occur no employee with ID 333 so again you see how it's much easier for other people to just simply do this to execute that complicated database logic than it would be for them to actually go in here and whoops I lost my page um, I'll find it Duh. 
than it would be for them to run this exact same uh, script. So that, that's really the big bonus of using stored procedures is stored procedures um, allow you to take that logic, encapsulate it into its own command, and then run that command as you see fit using the exec statement. So if I wanted to, you know, it becomes very easy now to give a bunch of people raises. If I want to give, you know, employee number one a raise, and then I want to give the other employee number two a raise, and employee number three a raise, and I, always, I want to give them all 50 cent raises, these three statements uh, will do it. There you go. Okay, so you might be saying, well, well, how can I, you know, I don't know who employee three is, but I know it's, you know, I want to give microphone a raise, right? Well, you could try something like this. Declare emp id int set emp id equal to all that goodness and then execute execute give employee raise uh, amp id and 50 cents yeah, where did i mess up here oh got to spell declare right mike that helps and there you go and I just gave myself a race. So if you didn't know whose employee ID was 33, you can always look them up by name first using a select statement and then get the ID and then pass the ID into here. Um, or you could rewrite the procedure to accept the employee raise by name rather than by ID, right? I could alter the procedure's logic to um, not cert not ask for an ID for input, but ask for last name and first name, and then look it up. So, for example, I could say emp last as varcar fifty, and emp first varcar. 50. These are just arbitrary values. I could have called this, you know, parameter A, parameter B, parameter C, but it makes sense to give them names that are, is going to help you find what you're looking for. Then I can say update employee set employee hourly wage where employee or employee last name is amp last first name Amp first, and now I really don't have to do all this garbage here. I can just say uh, amp last, amp first. So this gets simplified quite a bit. And last. It's going to look a little neater by the time it's all done. And then I, of course, got to change this. I'm going to reuse quite a bit of this. The raise did occur no employee with name. If you're going to, if you're going to modify it uh, off the cuff like this on the screencast, Mike, you better do it right. So <laughs> lesson learned for me, huh? You know, it's like, all right, hey, well, I could. This seems like a good idea, yeah, but. Uh, is this something I want to take on in the middle of a screencast? I guess it is. So we'll see what I can do here. I clean it up just a whisker here. There we go. Looks a little better. And of course, now I have to cross my fingers and hope what I wrote actually works. Okay, I have a problem here. I got two wares. That's easy to fix. Okay. Okay looks good, it's working fine. So now my give raise takes a last name and a first name and a raise. So now if I go back here, I can say give raise to fudge Michael and give him a dollar raise. And there we go. 
employ raise occurred. Now, in reality, I don't think you would ever want to give raises to people based on their names rather than their IDs. At, at, at worst, you should be using as input a value that's a unique key constraint rather than a pro, than rather than uh, if you're gonna if you're not gonna use the primary key constraint you should be using at least a unique key constraint because you want to guarantee that it's only gonna affect one row here um, there could be two Michael fudges and you can give the raise to the wrong one so this is probably not a good um, way to write this procedure but I did want to show you that you can modify it have a different number of parameters in here and um, kind of simplify uh, what you're looking to do. You know, that's really what it comes down to. You write these procedures to simplify the, the, the required database logic that you need to have. Okay, well that's a introduction to creating stored procedures. Hopefully you learned a little bit and I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks and have a nice day.